Hey everybody, it's Eric here at Learn Max again. We're gonna look at another work-inspired uh, tutorial, a work-inspired uh, topic inside of Max for Live and Max in general. Basically, I was working on a project the other day for an artist that I'm working with, and uh, the need came up to to put some some pretty complicated, uh, uh, basically some encryption code inside of uh, a Max patch that he's using to send data from different machines across the network, and we wanted to kind of jumble up some things so it wouldn't be in clear text, uh, as they say. So I, I, I built some encryption stuff in, and I did it inside JavaScript, and, and that's something that's kind of worth knowing about and worth checking out. Um, the other day we talked a little bit about uh, what you can do inside uh, of Max with um, Java and calling actual Java externals, but uh, JavaScript is really cool because what it, it's interpreted, so you can kind of work on the whole thing. There's a, there's the whole interpreter built right into Max, and you can kind of work without having to go out and you know compile Java classes and all that kind of stuff. Uh, it's pretty lightweight, and let me show you kind of some of the stuff you can do. So okay, uh, I have uh, one of my tracks here. I have um, Massive, um, and uh, hope they can hear a little bit. Uh, should be hearing that, I hope. I got my volume kind of turned down so I'm not feeding back here, so I'm gonna assume you can hear that. Okay, now you'll notice as I'm playing notes here, uh, you're getting a bunch of notes, right? It's not just a single pitch here. Let me turn off my uh, uh, my Max for Live object here, and you're, you're gonna hear something a little different. I'm gonna turn it on, okay. All right, now, so what's going on? All right. Let's look at this patch here, and we can look at it right in here. This, there's uh, not a, a, an awful lot we need to go in and actually edit on the Mac side. And the cool thing is we can actually get to the JavaScript right from here, right? So what's going on is we have, you know, this is a MIDI instrument. Um, so there's MIDI in, MIDI select. We're going to pull the note ons off of the MIDI selector. Everything else is going to get routed through. Now, uh, the note on is going to be actually a list. The first number in the list is going to be the note number, and the second number is the velocity. So I unpack that, and I send it, and I've got two different instances here. So uh, we can look at this part or look at these two. We'll look at these two for starters here. So what comes out of the unpack is the note number and the velocity. Okay, so I send it to two objects here, and you'll see this JS. That means JavaScript. And if I double-click on one of those, you'll see the JavaScript that actually runs inside there. Now, the nice thing about JavaScript, you know, why would you want to do this? If you're a programmer and, excuse me, and you're used to dealing with, you know, old fashioned kind of, you know, procedural, linear, uh, object oriented, you know, text based programming, you can still, you know, build all kinds of great stuff inside of Max for Live and Max using this. So traditional, all your traditional computer science knowledge is going to come in real handy. So uh, let's look a little bit at what's going on here now. So this is this pass.javascript. And when you create an object, um, you can open up, you know, you open up a text window and then you save it and your, your JavaScript uh, gets saved in the same directory as your Max for Live object then gets called from there. So you'll see I have defined uh, a number of inlets and a number of outlets. So here it's just a simple one inlet, one outlet. And I have some global variables you know, some simple setup stuff. I can pass arguments into uh, my object so I can have some setup stuff. I really don't have much setup in this one. This is a real simple thing. Okay, here's actually sort of the meat of the whole program here right now. Uh, I have a function called message underscore int. So anytime I send an int into this uh, object, this is the code that's gonna get called. I could have a message float. I can have, um, other methods here that are going to get called depending on what type of messages are passed to it. But this is a real simple one. I just send it a uh, integer in. The integer the, the, is going to come in here as v. And so vg is going to be my global version of v. Uh, and that's going to set that. And now you'll see, oh, and this is, you know, something, this is, I was experimenting with set timeout, which actually isn't implemented in JavaScript in Max for live uh, and Max. So ignore the set timeout and this delayer. <laughs> Embarrassing. Yes, I do experiment on the side. But anyway, okay, so here's the meat of it. And we'll save that. So you can notice, hey, I'm actually, uh, oh, how did that, uh, oh, no, I don't want to save my live set. I want to save this, oh, you know, I just realized I can't save this JavaScript unless I have Max, uh, the actual object open at the same time. Isn't that, we learn something new every day. 
Okay, so I just opened it again, and here is my editable version of the patch. And now I will say S, and it will save my JavaScript. And I will actually even remove those things again, so you guys can tell I'm actually doing this on the fly. And yeah, I make mistakes all the time. What the heck? All right, so save. The program is saved and it is still being called, everything's good. So I can interactively kind of change stuff. So, okay, VG, V, now outlet. And what I'm doing here, the outlet is sending a list of uh, results, okay? So I am taking what comes in and I'm gonna send out a list, which is gonna be the same, that number with uh, minus 12, that number, that number plus 12, and that number plus 24. So I'm gonna send, for a MIDI note number, I'm gonna send the same note number, the note number an octave below, an octave above, and two octaves above, right? So I kind of create this, you know, massive uh, uh, four note, uh, you know, octaves uh, version of the note that comes in. So kind of a fun little thing. Uh, the function anything, basically, if any other messages come in, they get caught by this function. So it's just some way that, you know, kind of housekeeping. And then this post here, this uh, post basically means send this message to the max window. So uh, I can kind of use that for debugging purposes. So this, I you know, keep one of these. It's a good idea to have one of these in, in, in all your uh, max JavaScripts, just so you can have something to catch any messages that uh, are sent to it by uh, accident or unintentionally. So let's look back at our patch. Uh, so unpack comes along. Uh, my one note is now turned into four notes. So I have this iter here. And what iter does is it iterates through the members of a list, and it puts out individual values for them. So right, so it's going to take my list of notes, uh, my octaves, and one at a time, it's going to basically bang, 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 you know, four of them for every one note that comes in. So I create those four notes. Okay, so that's what's going over here, and you can see I've attached a message object on here. So when I when I play a note, press a note, you see here I'm pressing note 60, and I get 48, 60, 72, and 84 all at the same time. Okay, then it goes out the note out. Now I got some other scripts over here. Uh, let's take a look. We've got uh, a really really simple JavaScript. Um, one inlet, one outlet. It just receives message int, posts it. So I can see what's going on and outlet, you know, just sends it back out again. This is like the simplest uh, JavaScript you could possibly have in a uh, max JavaScript. So that's just there for kind of demonstration purposes. Uh, if you notice here in these guys it has one, one, that's just kind of creating by default uh, one inlet, one outlet kind of thing. Okay, so I've got this other one here, a little bit more elaborate. And it does get a little bit funky once you start uh, sending multiple JavaScript uh, things going on. Um, you'll see in a second what I mean. Okay, so now let's look at this one. This actually has two inlets and two outlets. So this one is meant to catch uh, the note number and the velocity and send out a note number and a velocity. So we'll take a look at what's going on here. You'll also notice I have a bang function here. So if you do send this thing a bang, it's gonna do uh, whatever, uh, you know, the global parameters were set up and so on. Okay, so similarly, we have a message int that receives a value. Now, um, you're probably wondering, okay, for multiple inlets, how do I know which inlet the, the integer comes in? Well, that's what goes on down here. You can see this if inlet equals equals zero. So if it comes in the first inlet, it's actually the index zero. That means this code gets called. Otherwise, this code gets called. So if I had multiple inlets, I would actually check them in order from left to right, inlet zero, inlet one, inlet two, inlet three, and so on. So this says inlet zero does this, and so it uses the note value. This one actually multiplies the note value, so it gives this weird kind of scale going on. Note 60 suddenly becomes note 120 and, and things like that. It's kind of a funky one. Um, and then it has to send, and it's important to do this in order, because uh, remember, you know, ultimately when we send it to a note out, uh, we have to bang the note number to get the note out to do the right thing. So we send the velocity out inlet one, and we send the note out uh, outlet zero. Okay, so that's what happens when inlet zero receives a note number. Now when inlet one receives a value, that is, we assume that's the velocity. So it just sets the velocity to the value you just got and, and waits around because we don't actually send anything out until we get the note number. So we kind of work similarly to typical max objects. Okay, 
So let me drag this over here and this over here. And I will kind of temporarily detach the other ones. And so you'll hear. And it's weird if, you, if I play up a scale, you'll notice I'm not, you know, what should be a chromatic scale is not a chromatic scale there, right? Okay. So that's what happens with that guy. Um, so there are some really, really simple uh, examples of JavaScript. So if you need to do anything, you know, you could have done really these same, these same patches, uh, these same programs inside a patch. Certainly, you know, it's up to you. But if you're used to traditional programming or you need to do something like actually implement a some type of cryptographic algorithm or encryption or, you know, something really fancy, some kind of, you know, stuff that you just feel more familiar doing traditional programming language. Uh, JavaScript is a, a great kind of go-to uh, way of doing that. So opens up all the regular traditional programming uh, idioms. So, okay. Think about that for a while. Hopefully it inspires you to do some crazy stuff. Once again, this is Eric for LearnMax. Have a great week and happy patching.